Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 262 for Monday, June 29th, 2020. And welcome to Gig Gab, the show that's by, for, and about working musicians here, as always, especially recently in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in San Jose, California, Paul Kent. How are you doing today, Mr. Kent? It's, I, I feel like we just talked to each other. I oh, know. Well, you know, it was good timing to do that last episode after you did your gig. I really enjoyed that that conversation and kind of hearing everything that you went through. And it, that was that was pretty therapeutic for me. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> But hey man. today, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yep. So um, I made a friend through the magic of the internet. I made a virtual friend that I uh, hope someday becomes a physical friend. But I made a friend. When I when this shelter in place started, one of the projects I wanted to do for myself was I wanted to learn about looping. And um, so I bought a looper, you know, got functionally okay with it, and then started looking for some information about how to improve my skills and ideas for songs that I could play. And so I started looking on YouTube and I came across this guy in Auckland, New Zealand named David Shannon. And uh, I watched everything that he put out and he, A, he, he's a good teacher. He has this genuine spirit of, you know, wanting to share his knowledge, which really was cool. And, uh, and then I watched some of like the interactions that he would have. He does some uh, Ask Me Anything, some AMAs. He, he also seems like a terrifically great guy. So I reached out to him. Uh, introduce myself. And through the magic of the internet, I'm happy to say that from Auckland, New Zealand, joining us today is David Shannon. Welcome, David. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good. I'm really cool. glad that you could do this. It is a ridiculously early musician's hours in New Zealand now, right? It is. It is. I feel like I should be just arriving home from a gig. Exactly. <laughs> For sure. So I, I wanted you to come on the show because there's a bunch of interesting things. You know, we have thousands of weekend warrior, semi-professional, professional musicians around the world who listen to the show. And you're doing some things that to me are really interesting, especially in this day and time. Uh, why don't we start with uh, like a little, a little background, you know, you know, I know that you've studied guitar in college, but why don't you just tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, you know, what you do, where you perform now, how much you perform, how much uh, is music part of your livelihood now? Just give us like a, a, a quick bio. Uh, cool. So, yeah, the last the last 10 years I've been doing music full time um, performing. And then over the last little, little while, I guess that's morphed into uh, really enjoying video and doing a lot more on YouTube uh, and that side of things as well, but um, but I, I basically picked up picked up the guitar when I was fourteen. Saw a guy at, at high school playing and singing, and uh, everyone hanging around having a good time, and something just clicked. I was like, I want to do that. Mm. So um, yeah. Uh, fast forward to now, I'm like, I'm pretty stoked with high school high school me. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> hang on. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um. I mean, that's that's like the the overview in a nutshell of um, kind of what's happening at the moment. And so uh, today you um, you gig, right? Yeah. You record original material. Yes. You um, have this really fascinating online presence that encompasses a lot of different skills where you're sharing your knowledge, you know, kind of inspiring people, um, sharing your original music. Uh, and so that's, that's the getting your music out and getting your information out to a worldwide audience. Right. And I think I read somewhere you're like a big Gary Z fan, right? You're like your, your approach to kind of fostering an online, uh, following you're quite serious about, you know, disciplined about figuring out how to reach more people. Right. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if discipline maybe is the right word, um, because I feel like, I'm, I'm pretty erratic and all over the show, uh, passionate and excited about a lot of things. Yes. Fair. Fair. <laughs> so I spend, I spend a lot of time, you know, creating and doing that. And, um, yeah, I, I love Gary V. Um, there's, there's a bunch of, you know, I think really yeah. cool people in the online space that, 
just quite quite frankly, it's cool seeing people that are encouraging because there's there's so much that we run into, and you guys will know this. You know, the the one guy at a gig that he's danced all night, and the one thing he decides to say is is the time the time that he doesn't like a song, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> and just, yeah. So I I just I think it's really really cool and really important that there is encouragement in the online space that it's like we've got some voices to listen to when you've come home and something's gone wrong you've had a bad gig you think like what am i doing um just to kind of get back on the horse again yeah well and you i mean we we try to embrace that here and you definitely embrace that with what you do and all your teaching it's i mean you 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 share your knowledge with people and that's huge right that that just kind of opens that whole door up of like yeah we're all in this together and and it's all good like we're all going to we all get to experiment and make some mistakes and we've all been through it so yep yeah yeah, yeah I'm actually fascinated you know you as a musician trying to get more gigs to support yourself and you know the the efforts that you put into your original music and actually I think I read somewhere that you've actually won some honors in your area, like, you know, singer songwriter of the year or something like that. Is that, is that, am I remembering correctly? Uh, it was from a, yeah, a, a singer songwriter group in Auckland. I, I won a, um, I guess a award or, or so from them. That, that seems like a very long time ago now. <laughs> mm. Still yeah. counts, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I've been really fortunate. I was, um, I was the most nominated, uh, person not to win, the uh, New Zealand Country <laughs> Music Horizon Award, which um, I'm super grateful for that crew and that time. It was it was really really great, but I, I did think that was really funny for a while. Um, yeah. So I'm interested why you're choosing to focus so much of your efforts on helping other musicians. You know, there's X amount of hours in a day that same amount of time could be applied to selling your original music or, or, you know, finding, you know, mm -hmm. additional gigs or anything like that. It, and, you know, musicians are, a are, a you know, that's a tough market to make a living on, right. You know, trying to get other musicians to, to, you know, Patreon you or however it is that you're eliciting support from them. So, so if there's eight hours in a day or 10 hours in a day or however many hours you work, what led you to say, I think I want to help people as opposed to I just want to continue to push my original music or continue to push my, my, you know, my solo career or anything like that. I, I think, boy, it's, it's just, it's something that's wired in me. Um, honestly, more, more than anything else. Yeah. Um, and, and I, it, there's, there's just a joy that I get from the, the comments and things like that of thinking, you know, cool. I, I with all of this stuff, I expect that I'll see people down the track that are like, you know what, this, this guy got me going, you know, and, and did a career in music because I guess tied into all this, I grew up with everyone around me saying, you, you can't do music full time. Like what's your real job going to be? And that's a really common um, sentiment in New Zealand. And, and I think there's a flavor of that across the, across the world. And yeah, no, we, we've got that. It's, it's, it's not a flavor of it. We've, we've got like the whole <laughs> array of it. It all, it exists right here. Whole yeah. Buffet. The whole buffet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, cause yeah. it is hard, right? Uh, you, you know, it's not, it, I guess it's no harder than, than any other entrepreneurial venture in, if you mm. really break it down that way, but there are so many people that are doing it that aren't there for the money that it, 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 you can find yourself in a scenario where, you know, you're like, wait a minute, like I'm, I'm trying to do this and, and the rules keep changing around me. This is frustrating. <laughs> right. You know, like, so I, I think maybe that's where the, the, you outsiders look at it and say, Oh, people don't do that for a living. They do that just for fun. And it's like, well, okay. But you know, like it can be a living. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you actually battle that quite a bit in Auckland uh, where you have kind of the, we call them weekend warriors, but the guys, they'll take the same gig as you and undercut you or do it for free just because they want to play for their wives and their, and their, or their husbands and their, and their families. Do you have that kind of amateur aspect that competes for the gigs that, uh, that you find yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did we lose there, you? David? Yeah, I mean, no, no, we're good. I I thought it cut out for a second there, but uh, okay. we're good. You're good. I, 
we totally we totally do um but i i kind of got to this point where i was like you know what that there, there's no competition and the reason i have that view is just because music is an expression of us it's something different and you know what in terms of even just our presence on stage who we are our song list and choices and all that sort of stuff i'm like at the end of the day it's people start going well we want you there's a certain vibe there's a certain you know sound or all that sort of stuff combined right so professionalism wins out yeah but i i think it's more than that it's just like i'm not the best person for a bunch of gigs Mm. you know so there's a bunch of gigs that if even if someone said we're willing to pay you this much money and it's crazy good and and we want you like at the end of the day now for me i'm like it's just not me it's it's not going to work like and i appreciate that but um you know if if it was for example like a a really heavy uh metal or rock venue i'm like i'm not your guy yeah right right. well yeah you've carved out your niche and you know who you are and and you in, in addition to having your own songs you know that that helps carve out your niche right but but also yeah you you, sure. know, you have your own you have your own style you um i found a, recently found a video i guess it's well maybe not quite a year old of you uh, a live show you doing englishman in new york, in new york and um and mm. just watching you build your loops together. And I realize this is a huge part of what you teach as well, but watching you build those loops together in, in a live setting, you, you really, I mean, it, you, it's, you are a clearly a student and a master of this craft uh, for sure. Like, I'm glad that you're out there teaching <laughs> because, well, because you, you do this, but, but I noticed, you know, as a, as a musician, you know, you, you kind of try and see what's, you know, what it took to get to this point, right. You make it look <laughs> easy, but it, that's never quite how it is. So I, you know, I'm watching you and it's clear you have a really good sense of time because I, I've played with guitar players. I'm a drummer for the most part. And I have played with guitar players that use loopers and, if they can't keep time, that starts to become a real issue. And your like your ability to to play a four bar loop or something, and then and then just rely on that's going to be okay, and that's going to loop through. Was 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 that sense of time something that you sort of innately had already, or when you started getting into the looping, did you realize, oh, I've got to I've got to really get this down and and work that out? <laughs> no, I th- I feel like at this point you should. You should, we should cut in to uh, some of the drummers I've worked with and, and they'll tell you I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you just make it look good. There you go. Hey, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I remember, uh, uh, I remember with the first loop pedal I had and I remember recording um, Roxanne, the basic, yeah. um, you know, verse, verse chords for that. And um, I thought I recorded it at the start of the song. And I thought, you know, that's uh, have many bars anyway. But um, I thought this would be great at the end of the song. I can bring it back in, and um, you know, and and fiddle around, play a few solos and things over it. And uh, <laughs> just one of those, just one of those things that um, when I brought it back in, not only was it probably half the tempo that <laughs> that I was now playing at, um, but even by the end of that loop. It was. It had sort of like sped up and and had to slow down again when it when it came back around. So, <laughs> well, that I mean um, that tune. The I think even the studio version, the police speed up throughout it. Like the the the, the foot is on the gas of the tempo all the way through that song. Every oh, turn I, around. I, yeah, they, I feel totally fine then. I've, yeah, I've, you're I've, you're validated. I was performing it <laughs> as as uh, as recorded yeah. as the artist intended. Yeah, but I mean, you do you play very percussive. I mean, certainly you, you use your guitar as percussion at times too, but even, even your, your rhythm playing is, is very percussive, percussive. In, in nature. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. I, Go ahead, David. Uh, it's, I guess it's just one of those things I, um, as I say, I, I've gone from, well, I've gone from doing like little restaurant run gigs and, um, and that to, to having a, a full, I am the wedding band, you know, with mm. my loop pedal. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it, I, I'm just lucky to have made a lot of mistakes at live shows and figured out like, hang on, what can I do here? This, this doesn't work. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to create what a whole drama with a kit would create sure. in terms of enough feel on the dance floor. Right. And, um, and that started out with basically uh, everything would be four to the floor because it was <laughs> the That's only easy. Thing, yeah. Uh, right. You know, yeah. that, that could work. Um, but so, it's just, so do you, it's for evolved. A, yeah. For a gig like that, would you build, I mean that, you, you know, I'm looking at this, that video, the Englishman in New York one where you, you built the loops in real time at the gig and then, and then just played kind of over them once you got it all in how much of a, say a wedding gig would be that versus loops that you had pre-prepared coming in and, and, and go with those. I, I don't do anything pre-prepared. Well, that answers so all, the question. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's got to lead to some disasters at times, like, which is, which is fun. Like any, any, any favorite disaster story of, <laughs> of a loop that went, went sideways. <laughs> well, I think, um, I mean, not not for those sort of shows because I guess I feel like there's a lot of grace now with uh, once you know your gear and, and pedals, it's like you can just have an undo and, and it just takes a little longer to build, right? So it's not – no one else really knows Got it. Um, yeah. for that stuff. But I, I remember doing I, – I finally got this really nice uh, golf club gig and uh, I, I'd just gotten a loop pedal on and – thought yeah great i'll take it along it was a new pedal and uh, <laughs> i remember recording layla and everyone's kind of watching and hanging out it's a relaxed afternoon and it just had never looped it before knew the solo thought great it's three chords so i'll i'll put them down but of course it's got that little pickup that little pushed beat and so i had that pushed beat coming around off timing <laughs> oh, um, yeah. again and again and I, I, I couldn't stop it I, I panicked I was oh. like I, <laughs> in the end it was just like I basically just stopped the song and and did not touch that pedal <laughs> for the rest yeah it is, it very, is, very, it very it sheepish. is humbling when when looping goes awry it is I mean it's it's a very helpless feeling so uh, you know I've been I, I did a couple streams and I tried to introduce and mostly songs that I learned from you David and um uh, for any guitarists out there that are listening to this, almost definitely your time is not as good as you think it is. I mean, I, I also thought I had decent time. When you have got to lock in time and then you play it back after four bars and you can just hear a little bit of drag where you thought you're you know, placing a, placing a snare hit or something like that, and then it makes you crazy. So it does take a little while to you know, really understand that time is time. Like, it's different when you play live with a band that there's, you know, you're always reacting to each other's time, you know, when you play with other people. But when it's just you and that machine, it's just that. I, I would ask you the question, and, and I'm assuming I know the answer, but is part of the reason you don't pre-record any of your parts or loops or rhythms is because that's actually the performance that people are paying you for. I mean, is is you're not a band in a box. You're actually creating a piece of art every time you go out and perform for somebody. Is that kind of the essence about why you're not pre-recording? Yeah. I mean, I, it is, it's exactly that. I, I remember a friend, uh, a great keyboardist, great singer, and he started doing stuff with backing tracks to the point that um, if he stopped playing, I kind of couldn't tell. Mm. And so that's that's been like a little guiding um warning bell for me of of just of what I want to do and and there's nothing wrong with with that he's still got an exceptional act and and awesome it just became that if if you're at a live gig for me it's a live gig and uh and you know we'll, we'll have a laugh. I I really actually like when things go a little bit wrong at a gig yeah. because it's it gives the us the opportunity to connect. Yeah, yeah, and be human. Um, and and it's kind of the fun of it. Well, that so you mentioned. Go yeah, ahead, go ahead. Dave. no, I was just I was going to sort of support that point that that like you said that makes that gig special, even though you know certainly <laughs> yeah. not planned, but that it makes it real for everybody that was there. I mean, it, and and. It part of it, a huge part of it is how you react as the performer, right? Like it can, you can keep in the vibe of the performance while you acknowledge the mistake or address it and move on and still be entertaining. And you know, we always say on the show, always be entertaining. 
and always be performing, you know, and it's part of it because that's what, you know, that you're still performing, even though things, especially because things went sideways. So yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. It, it is yeah. a one, it's a one off, you know, whatever you're doing in that moment for that audience, that that's the only time that that's going to, they're going to experience all of that. Let's so. hope if it's a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, I mean, I think that's what's great sometimes about, like what is live versus, you know, what might be online or not, because it's like when we listen to something just audio online and you're not experiencing, you're not in the venue, you're not watching the artist. Right. Suddenly it's like, Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. like, as we become really critical on the, the music and the pitch and all those sorts of things that on the night, you just remember like, that was awesome. Right. Yeah. 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 Pitch matters. I mean, pitch always matters. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a jerk about it, but, but it matters a whole lot less live in the moment than it does on recordings, either of the live moment or, you know, just studio recordings or anything like that. Yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yep. So like I said, when I was looking around the internet to try and get some ideas for looping, and I know you at some at several points you mentioned Paul David's uh, tutorial on looping, and and I'll, I'll tell you I think Paul David's amazing and a great teacher. I actually found your looping uh, uh, tutorials and information and approach way more digestible and helpful. I mean, Paul's a really spectacular guitar player, and and he does some stuff that is really kind of out there, you know, in terms of technique and 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 those types of things, but. I don't know. I mean, worldwide, and I've looked on YouTube, I, I'm i not aware of very many other people providing as much useful information about looping as you are. And, you know, you're like all in on this. You just, didn't you just start a Facebook group where loopers can come and share gear and share, you know, songs and all that type of stuff? Yeah, um, I, I did. It's, it's basically just under my name, David Shannon, a uh, looping community. And it's something that I realized in the comments on my channel was there's all these questions. And at the end of the day, I don't, you know, as much It's great that people are coming to the channel and finding value in it, but also what's happening now in that Facebook group is there's a bunch of loop artists that are, you know, they're both using an RC 30, for example, they can chat back and forth rather than kind of like me being like, uh, I used it a bunch, but I don't have one on me, so I can't, you know, check that out. So I, that's very cool to see. Yep. Yeah, I, I peeked in on that Facebook page a couple times, and uh, again, more ideas. And for me, it's just more about what songs lend themselves most to looping, and there's some really cool things that are coming through that. So I appreciate it. Just to, as an aside, what are you? You're not using like one of the traditional looper pedals. You're using like a kind of a multi function board that has a looping capability now, right? Mm. I'm using the Voice Live 3 from TC Helicon. Got it. And I, I've been, I've had that for a while. I'm, I'm literally for a long time been waiting for the, the next loop pedal to kind of come into the space that is um, caught up, if you like. Because I, I think in the grand scheme of things, looping is still, it's kind of new in and I'm saying that being like, well, there's still a lot of years, but I just say that because of the technology, the, the RC 300 is kind of like still the, the main beast mm -hmm. that's, um, affordable, or, you know, an option for most, most people rather than going to like, you know, Ed Sheeran's chewy <laughs> beast. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and, you know, there's not an option to still, have your your vocal come out its own channel, you know, without rewiring, you know, you can get creative and make it happen, but sort of fundamentally some of these kind of basics that you would want are still not really there. Yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. So where looping is going, you know, in all ways, it seems to me, you know, we still in different parts of the United States here have got... Uh, uh, different accessibility for venues for musicians to perform again coming out of the uh, shelter in place. Mm. And so it seems like a guitarist who can sing, uh, who knows how to, how to use a looper pedal to provide some beat. That's a self-contained small band. That's really excellent for a lot of restaurant gigs. That, that Those are the gigs that are opening up here in Northern California right now. Uh, 
But where do you have any sense as to where this is going? Like, what do you want in the next generation of loopers? <laughs> I, I think it's just um, it's going to provide a lot better musicians from the fact that looping is around because even in terms of songwriting, um, you can sit at home, you can create all sorts of different parts, you know, at any at any hour of the day. There's no sort of restriction. You don't have to go into a studio to um, record and do that. And so everything's just becoming more individually accessible. Mm. And I, I do have a little bit of a love hate relationship with it because although I'm like, right, I'm a loop artist, this is what I do. Um, there's nothing like having a bunch of real humans playing in real time together. Amen. Totally. You know? Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, that will, it, it will just never go. But I think um, it's what I love about Ed Sheeran is he uses the tech to improve his show, but it's not, um, it's not suddenly this robotic tech that, you know, uh, yeah. gets in the way of his performance. But, but yeah, I, I think in terms of where we're at now, I think there's going to be a bunch more people just putting things online. There's going to be a bunch of, and, and we're already seeing it, people that it's like, oh, actually I can collaborate, you know, with the likes of you guys, I'm I'm in New Zealand. You're in the states, and and realizing that actually we can collaborate musically, we we can connect any of those things. Totally. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's kind of maybe even bands that end up touring down the track that are like, yeah, I I found my bass player on Fiverr or you know some website <laughs> online or you know, and but the uh, poor the act- poor bass players on Fiverr getting paid less <laughs> than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, it's, you know, it's, it's not everyone puts their price at $5. Anymore. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. So I, so, uh, the, 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 about the tech of these loopers, because you're right, like certainly you can, and, and do the whole solo thing where it, that's all you do. But I, I play with uh, one guitarist in particular in an acoustic sort of thing. I wound up playing Cajon. He plays guitar. We have a singer mm. and, but he uses a looper at different points during the show, mostly to sort of lay a bed down so that he can uh, solo over it, but it still keeps it full and all of that. But that it's always like the tech isn't quite there because we're getting, you know, I, I always want a different mix out of the monitors than we would send to the mains. We want the solo louder in totally. the mains, but in the monitors, man, like I want to hear that rhythm track. And it's like, I find myself having to like close my eyes and, and find that rhythm track in the sea of, you know, it's literally the same guitar sound because it's literally the same guitar. Right. Then he's mm-hmm. soloing and he's trying to listen to the rhythm track, but he's also trying to listen to me. And so there are moments where it's like, I'm not quite sure who's driving the bus here and is the bus <laughs> still on the road, you know, like, <laughs> and, and, you know, it like there, that, as you said, have led to some magic moments. There was one, we had our first gig post quarantine gig the other night, um, outdoor gig and, you know, it worked out fairly safely, but we were really far apart from each other. A, because it was a fairly large stage, but also because we were trying to keep our distance from each other. So I wasn't hearing his guitar. I was only hearing the monitor and it was like, Oh, there, there, and there was one moment where it just got, I knew we were off from the, from his loop and somehow we like made it back home and it was like, we kind of looked at each other like, well, how did that happen? You know, <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Let's not try it again. You know, but, nice. um, but yeah, I like, I feel I'm with you that it's like, can we, can we step the tech forward of like four steps real quick right now? Because that would be mm. great. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's, that's a big one is, is monitoring. Yeah. Um, especially with the, the band side of things. And, and I've, I've, heard and seen some really creative ways of uh getting that happening okay but yeah but you know i i think the probably the the head rush looper board was the the last main um you know tech that came out and Mm -hmm. there's so many good things with it but then for their four channels you only have the you only have one pedal that either starts all of them Mm. or individually so you're kind of doing these Toe tapping, and I, I know that they've got updates, uh, you know, software updates planned that that I'm hoping will allow some 
remapping to be like, look, I want to start one and three with yeah. with one one push. And so some of these kind of what I would call basic functionality for a looper as it as its advance, you know, to have four tracks and things like that is is still just not there. It's a it, it's a weird end result of what I would have presumed would be iterative design. Like if if the people designing it are out there using it, you would think that these things that are obvious to those of us that are either using it or interacting with it without being in control of it, like me as the drummer, uh, mm. like, like it would seem very quick that like, oh, you'd fix that. That pro- clearly that problem shouldn't mm. exist anymore. Right. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, but you know, exactly that. Like surely we can send, uh, just the loop on right. on a channel, right? From yeah. from various. Loopers. Yeah, I'll take two so channels like, out of your out of your looper, and exactly. and and then I'll control it from there. It's great, no problem. Yeah. 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 Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> you, hey, David. Let's talk ahead. a little bit yeah. about about your life as a as a maker. Now, you actually, I think you have pretty decent video chops. Your videos are kind of interesting, and you do some some clever things. Is this all self taught? Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. I, uh, I, I basically, I, I found that I, I really enjoy creating. Right. And I think that's, that's quite common if we're doing music and that sort of thing. It's, it's, we, we enjoy making stuff. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so yeah, I, there's, there's a bunch of, if you dig through my channel, there's a bunch of terrible videos <laughs> where <laughs> I started, I started vlogging and, and just enjoying making video so there's there's one of me like the first time i jumped on a long board you know and it's it's probably like i don't know five or six minutes long of me literally going on a long board to a cafe that is about five minutes away you know <laughs> um but I, I just really enjoyed playing around with video and creating and and then obviously audio and um it's it's fun to create something it's fun for me and and that was kind of one of the things with doing the YouTube thing, I was like, if it's not fun for me, given that <laughs> it's totally my choice, what I yeah. do and how often I do it or not. Um, then I was like, then uh, I ain't doing it. <laughs> well, and that's, so, that's going to translate in your, in your, in the end product too, right? If, if you're excited about it, that counts for a lot that will shine through. And that's a huge, and I'd echo it. that. Yeah. You know, the way I kind of found my way to your stuff is there's good information but it's clearly presented by someone who has a, you know, a passion, you know, for helping other people who's into what he's doing. That's a pretty, that's a hook you can't fake. You know, that's not, that, that attracts people to an art that uh, is very different. And so I would agree with Dave that, uh, you know, the way that you talk to your audience, uh, hopefully, I, I would imagine that's part of your brand. Like I said, you seem like a great guy that I cannot wait to have a beer with someday. You just is, exude this, uh, a generosity of spirit where you know you're you're sharing your looping stuff. You know, actually, you know what the my favorite video of yours is that one that you did uh where you gave people um a quick hit uh of uh how to use channel EQ in Final Cut to just sweeten your to sweeten your your video recordings, the sound on your video recordings. You know, it was a four minute video or something like that. Totally cool. blew my mind and was so helpful. And you were excited to share it. And that was actually kind of part of the fun of learning what you were kind of sharing. <laughs> nice. I I mean, honestly, some of these things I think because I, I'm just learning like everyone else. And, you know, we we put on so many different aspects to what we do, I think, where it's like you're the sound tech, you're the roadie, you're the guitarist, you're the singer, you know, you're the videographer, drummer, you're the videographer, you know, you're also, you're doing the editing, you're, you're also the marketer and promoter and things a lot of times. And, you know, so I, I think some of those things, I remember learning that and, and realizing that it's like, Oh my gosh, that's, uh-huh. you, you know, the, exactly those aha moments where you're like something so simple that absolutely you can, you can teach in four minutes. Yeah. So and, I'll put in my request now more of those, please. And more of those. <laughs> yeah. I'll please. make a list of my top aha moments exactly. and then you, you'll really get to know me then because you'll be like, he had an aha moment about that. Like everyone knows that. <laughs> but that's how that kind of stuff works, right? You know, we, that, that's our, I, I do a different podcast for tech people for called Mac Geek Gab for, for Apple users. And, mm-hmm. and we talk about quick tips all the time. And the whole concept for us of quick tips 
are those things that you do automatically that when someone else sees you do it, they go, wait a minute. How did you, what are you doing there? What is that? And you're like, oh, this is the thing that the things that are obvious to you once they're obvious to you, but, but there was a moment in time where they were not, you know, and, and, and that kind of stuff we've found is super helpful to teach because it's, it, you use it because it's, it's helpful, but it, you, it's hard to remember to share it. You had a, a video uh, where you were showing people how to use the zoom L eight and you brought it outside mm. in the park. And you shared, well, you thought you shared one quick tip in that video. Do you remember what it was? You were, you were very excited about sharing this one tip. Do you remember this? <laughs> I, f I feel like it's the, the microphone that having a spare microphone. Yeah. But, it, it, yeah. Right. So explain that to people. So the one, those of us, those of the us listening that haven't seen this video yet, expl go ahead and explain this tip. Cause I think this is a great tip, but there's another one you had in the video that I don't even think you realized was a tip. So I'll share that. Too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's something I realized when I started um, filming and recording shows was I would take an output from the desk and be like, great, I've got audio. And then when I put it with video and, and watched it. it. It just lacked the, the environment. And part of that is my memory of the night. Like we were talking before the experience of the gig, but it, it what was missing was the actual room noise, w which kind of is the experience of being there. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, with, with the LA specifically, you can record individual channels, but you can mute um, a microphone from going to front of house or anything and and it's still recording its own level in the desk which is so good for post post production and mixing and it just it just adds that that room that overall kind of you know not great sound usually no it's usually from, terrible but yeah but absolutely. but adding just the right amount of that glues it all together into this thing and and as soon as you said that it was like oh what a great tip that's awesome. And that was part of what I was, uh, Dave, when you and I were going back and forth about what I was trying to create mm. when I did the live streams, right? So just taking mm. it right out of the board, I was like, it, you know, even with some reverb on the voice and the guitar, it still just sounded too antiseptic. You know, it didn't feel like, yeah. like I was playing a show for people live, right? Yeah. And um, But it wasn't translating. It, it, it felt like I was, I was playing a record for people because it was just, I was just taking what was coming out of the out of the board, you know, that's yeah. what I was streaming. So it makes all the sense in the world as you, tr as, and that, and the fundamental skill that, that you have shared here, streaming is for now, for many of us, it is our live performance. It, and mm. a live performance feels different than playing a record. It is part of the appeal, the vibe, the air, the, you know, the, mm. the background noise is part of what you're, I know for me, part of what your brain feels when you go hear a guy in a coffee shop or in a club or wherever it might be. And so I, that's, it's just a great tip. No, it's a great tip. So the, the second, t do you know what the second tip is? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really curious. Now. Okay. Well, the second one that I gleaned from it was, you know, as you left the house, you said, I'm bringing a pair of socks with me. And, and then because you were outside, you took that sock and put it over your condenser mic, this third mic that was getting the ambiance because there was a lot of wind blowing and you don't, sure. you know, our ears don't, we hear it, but our brains tune it out. Our ears don't hear the wind like rushing past our ears like we do when it's in a microphone, you know, totally. so having, having that sock over the mic totally eliminates that. Yes. It probably muffles the sound a little bit. You know, it's probably not acoustically neutral because unless you buy your socks to be acoustically neutral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, see it, I see a new business coming up. Shannon website. Yeah. <laughs> Shannon branded sock windscreen. That's right. But you know what? It doesn't matter. Like you don't need them to be acoustically neutral. Like we said, it's terrible sound anyway. We're just making it different, terrible sound, but it gives you that little bit of sparkle from the environment. Yeah. It, yeah they, they, I, I, I loved both of those tips. I was like, Oh, this, this, this guy, he's like us. This is like, you know, <laughs> he likes, he likes cool. the geeky stuff and he likes to share. I like this guy already. Yeah. That's it's a, a, my, you know, two essential gig bag items, a pair of socks and duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Are you guys back to playing like where where are you in terms of the, you know, uh, reopening and all that? We here in in the U.S., we hear that like New Zealand is finished. They you know, they won't let us in, but they're all good with the COVID <laughs> there. It, it, what is that really like? Yeah, we're at, 
it, it really is like that. And um, I, I have to remind myself because I, I don't particularly watch the news or that sort of thing. Sure. Um, I, it's like we hang out and I find out what's really going on, you know, from, <laughs> from everyone in their own, own space. But um, sure. it's sort of like we really forgot pretty quickly that the rest of the world is still dealing with this. Got it. Um, to be honest, we're, we're back into gigging. Yeah. Um, things, things obviously are still, uh, you know, a little bit different. There's various businesses that um, from a gig performance side of things with no uh, outside tourism and that sort of thing, there's a bunch of, of venues that like our, our business is entirely changed. Oh, that so, makes sense. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but in the grand scheme of things, um, we're enjoying being able to leave the house. You know, we can touch yeah. people again. It's yeah. okay. Um, it's, it really is. It feels so good. And doing some of those first gigs after kind of yeah. <laughs> hiding at home for two months, it was so nice. Yeah. That, yeah and that's, you, you just experienced that, right? Like, I, I did. I, I, we did a show on Friday. Did, normally we do our shows, as you know, on Mondays and we did a special episode on Friday after I did this gig Thursday night. And, and I, what I said in the show, and it, it like still kind of gives me chills, is the, the gig was great, but that moment in soundcheck, which was the first time that I had played and sang with other people uh, since, you know, for three months. It had been March 6th mm. was my, my last gig before everything kind of got locked down. And, you know, that moment really kind of, all three of us got a little choked up. It was like, oh, right, mm. like we get to do this again. How lucky are we? Like, y you know... I've always joked that if you call me at 3 p.m. on the day of a gig and tell me the gig's canceled, I'll be happy. Most of the, like, you know, because it's like, oh, great. Because I mean, that's the moment of the day where I'm thinking, oh, crap, I got to pack everything up and go deal with the logistics of getting it all set up. Once I'm set up and I'm there, like, I'm I'm good for the night. I'm really happy. Yeah. But, you know, that idea of you don't have to do any of that headache and you get to sit on the couch tonight. Like, that's amazing. Uh I, I wonder how long it will be before that would ever be true for me again. Uh, I was thinking on Thursday, you know, if John calls me and tells me it's canceled because of the weather, I'm going to be really bummed. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I'm going to take that for granted for a long time, which is fine. I'm totally good with it. Yep. So, yeah. 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 Well, good. I'm glad to hear that, that, you know, things are in that sense, back to, you know, being able to, like you said, being able to touch people again, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it, it would, Very if you, real. if you watched, if you listened to this 10 years ago or one year yeah. ago, but right now, no, no, no. I knew exactly like that, that resonated for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My, we were, my, oh, sorry, Paul. We were invited uh, to a friend's house for dinner last night. Who's in my band. And uh, I just brought a guitar along just in case. And um, I actually got to make music with another human being for the first time in four and a half months. And it really does, you know, the amount of emotion that kind of goes through you, how much you miss it and how much it is a part of what you are, you know, that's all flooding through me as we're playing this little four minute song. And it was just, mm. it, 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 you know, it's not a trite thing. And, no. you know, all the, all the little things in my band that, you know, we have to struggle with to get to agreement. I have a 10 piece band, David, and uh, all the little things that we have to struggle to, to get to consensus. They uh -huh. seem so petty and remote right now. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, my band has been together 20 years and uh, uh, you know, it, it's one of the things I'm very proud of in life and not being able to have it is been this kind of mind blowing earth shaking experience that we're living through here. So I envy my buddy, Dave, who got to play, I envy you that you're out and, you know, doing stuff again and, uh, you know, still waiting for when the time is right for me to get out there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Paul, you got any other questions for David here today? Well, let's just, uh, David, tell everybody, uh, the various ways they can find you again. We have, you know, thousands of, uh, of musicians around, the world who I think would just a get a kick out of what you share, b get a lot of value out of what, what you share, and hopefully we'll find some uh, some new fans for you as well. So how can people find you? Cool, uh, David Shen Hun. <laughs> I say it like that at gigs because it's like my name's spelled funny, right? And if we go back to it, uh, my great 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 grandfather was Chinese, and it's his two first names put mm. together. Oh, wow. you know, to make it look more European at the time. Um. But yeah, basically, you know, everything online, if you search my name, uh, 
S H A N H U N, I will appear, which is handy. <laughs> so you have a wealth of YouTube stuff. You've got a uh, you're fairly active now on Facebook, right? You're, you you yourself, you know, answer messages and you know things like sure. that, right? Yeah, uh, and I, yeah. I actually just put the the Englishman in New York uh, up on on the mighty Spotify. So congratulations, kinda, yeah, thanks. Uh, so your personal website, lots of YouTube stuff, the looping community, and your artist page on Facebook, and that's that's four pretty good ways to find you, right? Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, David, I just want to tell you again, you know, I, I feel very fortunate to have found you as I was kind of, you know, looking for my own purposes and to see someone who gives uh, their knowledge so graciously and joyously. Uh, it's been really cool getting to know you this little bit. And I look forward to that beer someday when our paths cross. I am definitely keen, Paul. I look forward to it as well, mate. Yeah, it'll be a good time. Yeah, you just just let us know when when they'll let us in there. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep you posted. Yeah, keep us posted. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, everybody. Check out David's. Uh, we put we'll put links in uh, here at uh, giggabpodcast.com so you can find David. And uh, thanks again, man. This has been so great, so great. Ugh. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you bet. So everybody, be like David. Always be performing. Yeah. <laughs>